Hello world, my name is Tim Russwick and welcome back to another game dev video. Today we're talking about why tactics are temporary and what you need to do to properly market your game and set yourself up for success. Now, why should you take it from me? Well, you fucking shouldn't because I have not been successful in my opinion yet in the game industry. I'm still working towards that, but I'll tell you what I have done. I've done a lot of stuff, okay? I ran a company for a couple of years. I've, I've created five different startup companies that all failed. <laughs> I should add that. Uh, and then I ended up creating my marketing company, which we built some software and we had clients and stuff to facilitate marketing. And I ended up selling that in 2015. And that was after several failed companies. And I don't really consider that like a success that happened on top of the failures. I just consider that an iteration of the process and just like game dev is an iteration right i think every game should do better than the last and build momentum over time so what the hell does that have to do with tactics well let me tell you because tactics are the things that you do right and if we're talking about marketing specifically but this applies to like everything tactics would be like posting on twitter posting on discord creating a discord server like all the things that you do right and the thing about tactics is they're temporary and they change. And so the problem I have with a lot of developers, and I, I get caught in this trap too, and I have to stop myself. So it's not me like preaching to people. It's just me like noticing that I do this and trying to help other people along the same path is like that shit stops working at some point or it doesn't work the same for everybody or it never worked in the first place and it just ended up fucking being passed around in the circles right so you ask any successful developer how did you do your marketing what did you do well i posted a bunch on twitter and then i sent to some youtubers and then i emailed the press about it like that's the same shit right it's the same shit that they they all do but why do some games sell three million copies and some games sell three right like what if everybody does the same shit why is there such big differences in uh, in the results, right? It, it doesn't, that, that doesn't make sense. Well, there's a lot of factors. And so the problem, the fallacy that we get into is we start thinking that the value is in the tactics, right? Dead sales sold 3 million copies. They contacted YouTubers. So if I contact YouTubers, I can sell 3 million copies. That's a lie that you tell yourself because it's not true. It's not, the value is not in the tactics because the problem is the tactics change over time. And we can get into details, but I can tell you just specifically, even Game Dev Underground. Game, Game Dev Underground started in 2000, I don't even fucking know anymore. I started it before I sold my marketing company. I started it while I had it. But it started as a Facebook page, right? And I was using Facebook ads to find people because I was like, how, how do I even find game developers? I just want to build a community of game developers. I use Facebook ads and I spent $5 a day on Facebook ads. And then I turned it into a blog and I started blogging and I was like, oh, well, maybe I can just attract game developers with game content, right? Like maybe because I just want to be around game developers. I want a community of game developers, but like I don't, what, what are they looking for, <laughs> right? Because I didn't consider myself a game developer at that point. I still consider myself a marketing consultant and i thought you couldn't be both at the same time which is a whole nother video but it wasn't until i started youtube that i started getting traction and this happens to a lot of people but what i what i see like when when people ask like oh well this guy sold a bunch of copies and he has a youtube channel or you should just post devlog videos on youtube right and and those are tactics and we can argue about why YouTube worked better for me than blogging, but it was the same thing, really. I just, I, I come up with ideas and then I create a medium with those ideas and then I pass it around the internet. But for some reason, the video format seemed to work better for me. And, and it worked better in a lot of different ways. It worked better from a time standpoint because articles would take me hours and hours and hours. The videos that I post are... You could, some call them low quality, but they're fucking unedited. Like, I can't make daily videos and spend six hours on editing, right? So, it's the process in which I do it, but it's also, like, the volume in which I do it. But it's also, like, my personality plays a big part into it, right? My vo People tell me my voice plays a part in it. I don't, like, I don't happen to be a huge fan of my voice, but people tell me they like my voice. So, there's all these different things, right? And I've 
I've been doing this for years, so I've actually seen, I've legitimately seen people create YouTube channels, steal my titles, do the same exact thing that I've done. I've watched it. They did the same exact thing. They posted daily videos. They used my same titles. They used my same ideas. They did it over and over again, and they didn't get traction like I did. They did the same thing, and the same thing happens in game dev. You did the same thing that Slay the Spire did when they launched, but you didn't sell a million copies, right? Why? <laughs> and it's because the tactics are the fickle thing. Now, now, this isn't just a video to tell you why tactics suck and then leave you in the dust, right? Because then you're just going to be like, oh, well, if, if I'm not looking for marketing tactics, what am I looking for? Well, I'm telling you what you're looking for. You're looking for concepts of understanding, right? In marketing, and this, uh, again, this applies to game dev and marketing in life, right? Any tactic is going to get outdated over time. Facebook ads worked great in 2013. Blogging worked great uh, around then. YouTube worked great a couple years ago. Like, it's still, it's it's a little weird now. Like, the, the things evolve, right? Discord is really hot right now. Um, we're seeing TikTok, Snapchat fell by the wayside, and then TikTok came up. All these different, like, it evolves and it changes, right? So you can't rely too much on tactics. You have to learn concepts. You have to understand. And one of the biggest things that I learned in my marketing company, like just working with clients, is like this idea of go where the people are, right? And it, it's basically a concept of like you have a thing that people need to buy, right? But when, when you're so attached to the thing, it's you almost always come at it from a perspective of like, how can I sell this thing? Right. But most of the time you don't like pause and close your eyes and think, okay, who would buy this thing and why? Like, who is that person? Right. Really? Who are they? How old are they? Are they married? Do they have kids? What kind of car do they drive? What kind of income do they make? What kind of free time do they have? What's their job? Like, you know, what do they do on the weekends? What do they do for fun? Like how, in, in marketing, this is called a customer avatar or whatever. You're supposed to create a fictional person uh, and identify them, right? Because once you identify them and you have the empathy to step into somebody's shoes, then you can say, okay, where would that person hang out, right? Like, where would they, where would they go on the internet? What websites would they visit? Oh, okay, they, they would visit this website. Well, they're a huge RPG fan. They would go to RBG forums. They would go to all these different places. Okay. They might even go to meetup groups, right? They might have D&D groups. They might have, they might be in Facebook groups. They might, they might do all these things. And then you're like, okay, well, I don't need to be everywhere, right? I don't need to get my game on the front page of every website on the internet. I just need to get my game on the pages of those websites where that guy or that girl hangs out, right? Where they hang out. And so the conceptual understanding of going where your target audience is is way more important than the tactics, right? Because when people learn the tactics, post a devlog on YouTube, tweet three times a day, and use hashtags. When you learn the tactics, you're not learning why those things work right? You're not learning why someone had success by doing that thing and why you're not having the same success. And YouTube, for example, it turns out that like, there's a, there's a hidden skill to this. You got to have the gift of talking and the, I, I don't even know how to describe it. And some people just don't have that. They don't have that. So even if they do the same thing, if they do the same tactics, they don't get the same result. Now, there's a big, there's a big timing as part of it too. Like, you know, timing is a huge part of this. And this is something that like every time I fucking talk about this, I get people upset at me. They fucking hate when I say that's a lot of success is luck. And I don't care that they hate it because it is. It's luck and timing, right? But if you understand the concept of how to market your game. If you understand the concept of go where the people are, if you understand the concept of a target audience, you can really understand a person that would, would willfully give you money for a thing. And you really, you really understand them. 
then you know that you're making their life better by creating your thing, right? And you know where to find them. And when you combine those two things, adding value to someone's life and making their life better, and knowing where to find these people in mass, you can market anything with any tactic, with any platform, right? It's still a lot of work, and it's still a lot of luck and timing because you might just find the right avenue for that, right? When I started Game Dev Underground, I was getting uh, Facebook clicks for game developers between a certain age group and like very specific for I think it was like 13 or 15 cents a click. You can't do that now. You can't do that now. It's a dollar or more sometimes, depending on what you do. A- advertising in general is just, you know, and same thing with like 2005 Google, right? You could get AdWords clicks for insanely cheap. You can't, you can't get that anymore. Timing is a big part of those and why those work, right? Same thing with YouTube, same thing with Twitter, same thing with all that. Like the time of day you post on Twitter, it's not even the time of day. Like you could post one time on Twitter and it happens to be seen by a dude with a huge audience and they happen to click the retweet button and that happens to a publisher happens to see that. And you see what I mean? Like there, there could be a whole string of things, right? Reddit is one of those things too. Everybody wants to get to the top of our gaming, but like <laughs> there's a lot of fucking luck involved. There's a lot of hard work. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of work that goes into titles and all that. And I know I've been to the front page of Reddit. I've been to the top of our gaming with my games. But it's a lot of work. <laughs> but it's also a lot of luck. And it sucks. But the, the thing to keep in mind is like the tactics don't matter as much because they, they go out of business. They expire. They're temporary. And it just sucks when I see people that have some success with a thing and then other people see that and immediately they just try and do the thing and they don't have the understanding of why the thing worked. And so if I were to tell you something, and I know this is general and vague and we like the specific tactics, right? Everybody likes the tactics. But if you want to learn something, you need to understand the underlying idea of why it works, right? I'm going through this with my art right now. I'm in a process where I can iterate to make something look good. I can make something and then change it and then change it and change it again and make it look good after 25 tries. But I'm realizing that I don't understand the conceptual nature of why these things look good. And I don't understand the conceptual nature of why lighting affects things certain ways or why certain colors work together. I don't know any of that. So I spend a whole lot more time just iterating until something looks good because I don't understand the conceptual reasoning behind why my tactics work, right? And it's, it's taking more time than it should. And it, it always does when you're learning. It takes extra time. But that's part of the process, and that's part of what you need to learn. So the takeaway today is if you're looking to market in an indie game, you need to know who you're selling to, and you need to go where they're at. And you need to think outside the box. And you know what? It, it's f- I hate fucking giving generic ass general advice. Everybody's like, we know that, Tim. We know we need our fucking target audience. We've heard that shit a thousand times. Well, so what do I do? What do I do? That's the question. And the question is, if you copy what everyone else is doing, you're not always going to get the same results, and you might get worse results because you might use a platform that's not cut out for you or is outdated or whatever. So you got to understand the concepts. And I have a few videos on that. You can search for the channel on concepts you need to know for marketing and KPIs and how to determine all that stuff. Uh, but I want to thank these people right here. They help me keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, they help me stay on the video grind. If you want your name on this list, you can head over to patreon.com slash game dev underground tools, training and technology to help you build, finish and launch better games. But yeah, yeah, big old video that doesn't tell you what to do. <laughs> now you're lost again. But hopefully I gave you some insight that was helpful. My name is Tim Ruswick, and I will see you again soon.